in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Good morning. Um, have you ever known in your heart that God was calling you for something, to do something for which you just know that you are completely unprepared? Um, this was the situation that I found myself in five years ago. Uh, a friend of mine in Haiti, his name is Arnold, um, and Arnold asked me to help him start a ministry here in the United States, one that would support the work he's doing in Haiti. Now, as you may or may not know, those of you who've known me here, I've been involved in Haiti missions since my parents took me to Haiti for the first time. I was 13 years old. Um, but actually, um, you know, moving beyond leading a team from our church, which I had been doing for a few years, but actually moving beyond that to starting and managing a nonprofit, that was way out of my league. Uh, I mean, I'm a simple school teacher. I know nothing about corporate or nonprofit, uh, that side of um, our world, but uh, just having a calling um, and an incredible group of supporters, um, both here in our church and in Haiti, um, it's, been, it's been an amazing experience because what I have personally learned is the provision of God um, and how uh, relying on God in our times of need uh, is when we see his greatest works. Um, so I, I just kind of want to take us on a brief kind of trip through the last five years of how this church, this congregation has supported the ministry, the work that we've been doing in Haiti, what you're giving your donations, your uh, purchases at yard sales, your purchases at barbecue sales, what all of that money has gone to build and create in Haiti. So let's start where all the way back kind of where for many people here in the United States, our consciousness, our awakening of the needs in Haiti kind of started. And that was back in, for many people, that was in 2010. We all remember seeing on the news um, this earthquake that devastated the country. Uh, in just a minute, over 200,000 people were killed. Um, we can go to the next slide. One result of that tragedy is that hundreds of thousands of people in the capital city of Port-au-Prince were homeless, and they, got, uh, they were living in these tent cities that the government allowed to be built inside the capital, but as the months turned into years, the government said, ooh, we need to really show progress that, that we are b working to rebuild our country. So that means we can't have these tent cities in the, in the capital anymore. Remember, Haiti was already the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The average Haitian lives on less than $2 per day. So when you have an entire country devastated by this earthquake, the government didn't really have the capacity um, or even the willpower to truly rebuild the country. And so the solution for getting rid of these tent cities wasn't to build housing, it was to push them out into the wilderness that's on the outskirts of the city. We can go to the next slide. This was an area of the country, and I know you can't really see it that well, but you can just see rocks and concrete scattered everywhere. This was the uninhabited area just outside the capital city of Port-au-Prince. It's not that Haiti didn't have people who needed homes. It's that this, la this area had largely been considered uninhabitable um, because it had been completely deforested uh, as the as Wood is really the only source of fuel for Haitians. Um, and it lacked, completely lacked anything that we would consider as modern infrastructure, like roads, water, electricity, completely desolate, mountainous area, part of the country. But over the last few years, we have seen communities spring up out of there. It's, it's interesting, you have a city, a city, of over 100,000 people called Canaan, because so many people view this as uh, the promised land, a space that we can call our own, the place where we can rebuild our lives. And right next to Canaan is this small community called La Mer Frappe. You can't really see it in this picture because all you see are the rocks. But out of these rocks, these Haitian people have built a life for themselves. 
The, the Haitian ministry that we partner with works in this area, and we have uh, purchased a three-acre piece of land in the middle of the community, and we've gone about developing it into a city on the hill. It, it's interesting. It, it's so rare you get a chance to start from the very beginning, not just the beginning of a ministry, but the beginning of a community. This is a community that has sprung up out of the wilderness, and we have this opportunity um, to be the light at the top of the hill for all the people who live there. We can go to the next slide. Our goal in this ministry is really quite simple. Make disciples of God. Everything comes back to that. Everything that we are doing centers on are we making disciples of Christ with what we're doing? And the way that we have chosen to attack that is really in three areas. First is making sure that we're providing Christ-centered teaching for uh, the babies through the senior citizens. But going along with that, it, we, we choose to be a little bit more holistic because it's hard to preach the gospel to a child who hasn't eaten in two days. And so we work on meeting the physical needs of people with uh, food, clean water, um, medical care. And also, we, we focus on the education of the next generation because it's all about the next generation. We, next slide. From day one, Cornerstone, you as a congregation have been with us, supporting us, working alongside us as we work to meet that goal. You can see here our first two buildings that Cornerstone helped plant uh, in July of 2017. You see the concrete office building right there. That's the, the thing with the reddish brown windows and the tin roof. And, and then you, you don't even see, that's, that's the earliest picture that I could find of the church building as it was being built. See, we have a church building like this in Haiti. It, it's uh, corrugated tin uh, for the roof and the walls, and that's it. And they're happy with that um, because it's a place that their ministry can call home. So this church, uh, we actually, starting from the very first day, our finances, our resources funded um, the revivals that we hosted in the community. And out of those revivals, seeing people come to the Lord, a church has grown out of that. That church now has a weekly attendance of about 400 people. The next thing that we did to prepare for the opening of a school is we dug a well. The most critical piece of infrastructure that we could think of was to dig a well. Because how can you have a school, how can you have a church when there's no water anywhere? The only source of water for people living in this community prior to us digging that well was dirty water that was sold to them off the back of a truck. Dirty water that would make them sick sick in a community that had no medical care. So we, we funded the digging of the well. It's actually the most expensive thing that we have done in La Mer Frappe. It cost about $6,000. We want to know what the return on that investment is. 3,600 gallons of water per day. That's how much water we pump out of that well every single day. That water irrigates crops that are used to feed children. That water is handed out for free to members of the community. Haiti has a system where if you don't own the well, you buy the water from someone who does, except for in our community, because Cornerstone saw the need to invest in the building of something different. Next slide. In the fall of 2017, we opened the school meets in the same building where they, uh, where they go to church. Now, in, um, in our clean, controlled, sanitary, American way of thinking, we said we're going to start uh, in a very controlled, clean manner. We're going to start with 60 children, and we will start with two classes. We'll start with a pre-K class and a first grade class. Well, the need, um, the need was so much greater than that. And we found it was impossible to turn children away. So we started, we started with, we had the budget for 60 children, but we started with 140 children that year. Um, instead of two grades, we started with five grades. Um, and, and it's funny um, because it, it turned into such a blessing. 
And, and that blessing is from the very first day, it put us in the position as a ministry of saying we are completely and entirely dependent on the provision of God. Because if he was not there providing for our needs, there is no way that five years later we would still be functioning. So thank you. I'm probably going to say that another 10 times. Thank you for helping us, for being the practical side of God's provision for us. We can go to the next slide. Today our ministry has grown. I told you that the church has a regular attendance of about 400 people, and we have 390 children who are going to be going to the school this year. The school year has been delayed, the start of the school year. I actually haven't started. I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but when we do open up, it's, we have 390 children registered this year. Those children go from pre-K through ninth grade. Each, of, each and every single one of these children is going to be taught by godly Christian teachers in a Christ-centered classroom. They're going to receive an education a hot meal, it might be their only hot meal that they eat, the only meal that they eat that day. Because so many parents prioritize, if they know that Timmy is getting his meal at school, we don't have to feed him at home and we can feed the other children that live in the household. Because it's probably just one or two of the family children who go to the school, and the rest of the family's children still need something to eat. So they get an education, they get a hot meal, they receive medical care, we employ 48 Haitians, all right? We have, we have worked very hard to learn from, um, from the people who've done this type of mission work before that, where it says instead of just handing people um, some money or handing people a bag of food to give them, um, to empower them to earn for themselves. And so uh, there's a lot, there, there's a big part of our ministry that's almost kind of like a jobs program where if we have the resources, we're gonna find a way to employ you to help the ministry. And so we have teachers and pastors, we have support staff, cleaning ladies, cooks. We have um, people who work for the medical clinic. We have people who work in the office. We have people who work on the micro farm that we have on the property. All of these people, all of these positions are funded um, through American donations. There's not a single American who's paid for this ministry. Every single American uh, who sits on the board, who uh, does the work. Um, my mother, my mother, my goodness, my mother probably works harder than anyone else for our ministry. And it's entirely volunteer. All of the resources that we have, the financial resources, go directly to the people of Haiti. We operate a clinic one day a week. Um, we have a full, we have, you saw, I don't have a picture of it, and I should have a picture of it. Um, you saw we have uh, 10 buildings. Uh, well, our, one of our first truly permanent buildings as a clinic that has been built. We can afford to have the doctor there one day a week. We would love to have that doctor there five days a week, six days a week, but right now we can afford one day a week. And in that one day, he's able to see about 40 patients a day. Um, that includes our students, but that also includes the members of the community. Um, we have this clean water ministry, as I, as I mentioned earlier, that's 3,600 gallons of water. Think of how much water that is. 3,600 gallons of water per day. Next slide. None of this would be possible without the support of American donors and American churches who have seen the vision to partner with this ministry. We would love to have a lot more churches who have that vision that you have. Um, but you, Cornerstone, as a congregation, have been there since the very first day partnering with us. Um, your support has made it possible to do this ministry, and without it, uh, I don't know where our ministry would be right now. You have directly funded, so not just the ministry as a whole, but the direct projects that this church has financed have been evangelism, an annual revival that they hold in the community that usually draws in over a 1,000 people on the weekend that's been directly funded by donations from this church. The well that we dug at the very beginning and the pump and the clean water system, those are things that have all been partially or completely funded by this church. Um, we've built furniture. Um, we had another church who put a lot of money into building 
the 10 buildings, but you can't have a school without benches and desks. Our church has funded those projects. You can't have a school in Haiti without uniforms. All the children are required to wear little uniforms. That's what every single school child in Haiti does. Um, we have par purchased the books. Um, every single year we have purchased the uniform material so that that can be given to the parents um, and the school books that they use. There would be no school books at our school if it weren't for Cornerstone Baptist. Um, we also have uh, vocational training uh, for, for men and women in the church community. We have taught them how to earn a living for themselves and given them the resources and supplies that they can actually then turn into uh, a way to earn money. Um, we have funded teacher and school training on multiple occasions. Um, I, if I ask the other people who've worked with us over the last five years, I'm sure um, they could remind me of other things that we've directly worked on. But when you, when you add it all up, the scope of things that this congregation has supported is it's mind-blowing. Next slide. The support that you have given us have come through all of the little fundraisers that we've done with you. How many yard sales have you supported us before COVID? All right, you came in and you worked and helped us set up. You donated all of your, supply, your, your things from your house, your treasures that we could help find new homes for. And then you came back and you bought someone else's treasures at that yard sale. Um, how, many, how many silent auctions and uh, barbecue sales did you come out and support? But your support has also come not just from fundraisers, but from individual people making the decision in your home and in your heart that we are going to support the people of Haiti. And that's come from direct donations that you've made to the ministry or through child sponsorship. You know, ministry-wide child sponsorship is the backbone uh, of our funding. Um, and there are so many of you, there are dozens of you here in this church who have chosen to sponsor a child in Haiti. Um, that, is a, that is a direct investment in one child's life to say, I'm going to help you have a better situation tomorrow than you have today. And, and that's, that's amazing um, to, see the, um, to see what it's like to have uh, a child who um, was not regularly fed, uh, was, had no one at home who could teach them their ABCs and their one, two, threes. You see a child come into a school and over time, because that, that's the great thing about us being directly involved is we can see these children grow over time. And so that child sponsorship that so many of you have done, I'm, as, as the ministry's president, I, I am so incredibly grateful for that support that you have done. And we can move on to the next slide. As Pastor Ted mentioned, for I believe it's about the last four or five years, there has been a 1% budgetary contribution, and this is, this is the final way that Cornerstone has really financially supported our ministry. Now, historically, uh, up until just a few weeks ago, that money had always been saved here at the church and had gone with mission teams to fund ministry expenses when we would take a mission team. Well, um, it's pretty much since COVID, it's kind of upended our ability to take teams to Haiti. And there was a brief window out, coming out of COVID last summer and spring when a few trips were able to be taken. Um, but since then, the political, and, um, the political instability of the country has just uh, skyrocketed to the point where it, it's, simply, it's simply not safe to take trips right now. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't still people there. Um, because the need has so exponentially increased in the last few months, the last year, uh, we'll say, it's just because we're not able to take trips, we're not able to send people, um, that doesn't mean that the need has gotten smaller, in fact, it's gotten greater. Um, and so I, I thank you so much um, for the vote that you made a few weeks ago that um, was take that 1% instead of funding mission projects to turn that into a monthly contribution to the ministry. It's the same amount of money, it's just being given differently. Uh, and it allows us as the Ministry of Hope United just to budget for that money and plan for that money. I I'm going to be honest, um, if there was a church in America that had to shut down for COVID and had not yet reopened here in 
uh, September, October of 2022, two and a half years later, uh, the finances of that church would be really strained if they'd been shut down for two and a half years. In Haiti, the, the church is still open. Don't get me, don't, don't miss, uh, don't hear what I didn't say. The, the church there is still open, but the excitement and the passion for the ministry comes from our ability to take Americans on trips to work with our Haitian brothers and sisters. We haven't been able to do that. The, the different churches who are involved have not been able to send mission teams for two and a half years for the most part. And so, I, I'm not gonna lie, the, the finances of the ministry, they're strained right now, they're stretched. And so, Cornerstone continuing to show faith in this ministry continuing to support us and to support us in a different way of making that money budgetable um, is, has been an incredible help for us and I am very grateful. There are still ways that you personally can support us in our time of need. Um, you can continue to pray for us. We have never missed payroll. We have, we have every single month for five and a half years, we have paid every single one of our employees what they have been contracted to receive as their salary. Like, that, that's important. <laughs> um, we, we have never missed a meal. We have always been able to feed our children. Maybe not as much as we want or the quality of food as high as we would like, but we have never missed a meal. We have never missed a paycheck. Our, our school is going to reopen. We are scheduled to open um, a week from now. Um, will the political situation, will the violence that we see in Haiti be, be calm enough and stable enough for us to actually be able to do that? I, I pray that it is. Um, I, I remain a little bit doubtful. Um, but I pray that a week from now we will, be, we will see a calm enough situation in Haiti that school will be able to open. But if not, there is going to be a day when Haiti is calm enough that our school will open and we will be ready on the first day of school to greet 390 children as we truly have become the center of the community. Um, when there are times of need beyond just normal Haitian need, people know that they can come to our ministry and they can find help. Since we are not feeding children in school because school is closed, we are taking that money and turning it into food supplies that we are distributing to our parents. This is how we're continuing in our times of struggle to still be able to meet the needs of the, the community and the children that we minister to. So you can continue to pray for us. You can sponsor a child. If you, have not, uh, if you are not currently sponsoring a child and would like information, uh, let me take a step back. Even if you are currently sponsoring a child and would like to sponsor another child, um, I would, be, I would love to talk to you. My mom would love to talk to you. Doreen Ray would love to talk to you. Any one of the three of us can t t walk you through the steps of how to sponsor a child. Um, but we actually, two and, two and a half years later, we have our first fundraiser here at Cornerstone Baptist Church, and it happens next Saturday. Now, I'm not asking you to come set up for a yard sale. I'm not asking you to, to dig through your basement and find things to donate. Uh, we have changed. Instead of doing a yard sale, we're now having a vendor fair. And we have 35 different vendors who are scheduled, including um, many people from within our own church community. Um, we are going to be set up in the, where are my directions? The parking lot over there. <laughs> the parking lot over there. We're going to have 35 different vendors and food trucks set up in that parking lot on Saturday from 9 to 4. If you want to come a couple hours early, if you want to come at 7 a.m. and help us set up some tables, we would love the help. If you want to come at 4 o'clock, if you can't come for the sale itself and help us tear down tables and put them away, we would love that. But that's, that's the extent of what we have to do. We are using this facility um, that God has blessed us with to have this event for our community. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. We've been able to raise uh, over $1,000 off of it from the vendors purchasing uh, their stalls. So it's really exciting uh, that we're able to use our facility for another fundraiser for Haiti. Um, and we would love to see each and every single one of you come join us next Saturday. So one last time, I would just like to extend uh, a word of thanks from the board of directors of Hope United um, to Cornerstone Baptist Church. I'm exceedingly grateful for how you have supported us 
collectively as a church with the, with the church finances, but also the individual contributions and prayers that each and every single one of you have, have at different times made for us. I'm extremely grateful for that. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing what God's going to do in Haiti over the next several years as we continue this ministry.